back in. Yeah, I knew this was going to be a topic, but I'm so excited about it. So this is part two of Intact versus Circumcision, Choosing for Your Baby. And I'm Kaleem Joy, licensed midwife, certified pediatric massage therapist. Please watch the beginning of that one. We're coming to the end of this. This is part two. So um, now somebody has to remind me where I was. Uh, there we go. Yeah. So um, when you're looking at, oh, I lost my train of thought. Somebody remind me where I was. <clears throat> I was wondering if you'd ever live on ultrasound. Yeah. Oh, about trauma. Thank you. Okay. So trauma in our brains, our brains talk about um, when our brains are programmed that when a trauma happens, rather we touch a hot stove, we almost, we walk out into the street and almost something hits us. Um, we fall, we come up against something. The brain goes, Hey, that wasn't good for us. You need to remember this really clearly so that you don't do it again. Now, when a trauma happens like that, the baby is going to set a cellular memory in of something that reminds them not to let something happen. Okay. And what that could be is to me, just, just from, from, this is, this is the, the answer according to Kaleem today type of thing. I believe that what they remember is that something hurt them in that situation. And being strapped down and having pain and going through that, now hang on for those of you that did this, all right, is there is a cellular memory there. And what I believe is, is that when they grow up, it comes out, they just don't know where. And I see it sometimes that it may be in being more macho, having to prove themselves, having to, um, <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know where it all comes. But in able to say to them, regardless of whether you do or you don't, cognitively remember it you went through that if they watch one right and going through it <coughs> is in and of itself a trauma that shouldn't have to happen when we have the knowledge all right that's why i'm going to say to you parents that didn't have the knowledge at the time when you have the knowledge what choices would you make? All right, babies are not born low in vitamin K. They're all born with the levels their bodies can utilize. Even doing the oral is harmful and can tax their tiny liver. It may not have had the bad ingredients, but they don't need it first in order to absorb vitamin K. So just to go back on that, you know, that is a philosophy that I do agree with is that babies don't form vitamin K for a reason and they begin to develop it as they need it. Um, but when you're going to do something abnormal to them that could cause an abnormal bleeding issue, is there a reason to give vitamin K? And I, as a professional, I would say yes, because the risk of bleeding because of a low vitamin K is so high. So <clears throat> that's according to me. All right, let's see what else. My biggest fear was not doing it is the better stories you hear from the people that work in nursing homes saying all men get tons of infections and have to get circs late in life when it's super painful is there truth to that they remember it they definitely remember it right thanks navar all right some of the trauma that goes on in these babies um, when i work on them that can get released from their body so for those of you that have had baby boys that were circumcised, get them some cranial sacral work, get them some EFT, which is emotional freedom technique tapping and work through that so that they don't have to carry that forward in life. So thank you, Navarra. That was a, that was a good thing to bring up. <clears throat> 
Um, I'd love to do a live on ultrasounds. Um, I really don't want to have one unless there's an emergency. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, let's see. Do you think vitamin K drops are necessary if you don't circumcise? I believe that unless <clears throat> the baby has had some reason to have a lot of trauma during the birth, <coughs> it's a matter of a parent making that decision. Um, I personally look at birth as a normal occurrence. And when babies come through where they haven't had a lot of Pitocin and epidurals and vacuums or things like that, then I believe that their bodies are made the right way to not need to have all that excess vitamin K afterwards for a reason. Um, I know that that's tradition in the medical world and even in some midwifery practices, is that babies should all have vitamin K because what if, what if, what if? And I'm like, you know, we didn't start out needing the what if, but if, a mom has had, a birth giver has had antibiotics during her pregnancy or labor, then the gut is more sterilized, which means that the baby does not populate as well, which means that their ability to manufacture vitamin K is reduced, which means they may be at greater risk of bleeding. So having said that, you have to take those things into account as well, okay? All right, let's see what we got. If it's painful late in life, it's even more painful for infants. They've done studies that show evidence that babies actually experience more pain than adults. Exactly. It's true. Even when in deep sleep, they register pain more profoundly. You know, I don't know why anybody thinks that babies don't feel as much. <laughs> they are Their whole body, everything, their beingness is taking in and learning about what this life is all about. And when things don't feel right, they begin to have a reaction to that. Can they emotionally heal from it or clear it from memory? Oh yes, actually, we just talked about that. So they can. Um, and I believe that if, if, a, if, a, if they're gonna circumcise, they should have aconite, arnica, and staphysagria. Um, homeopathically given to them right before, right after, and three or four times a day for a few days to help some of that rebalancing. I do think that cranial sacral work can help them release that afterwards. So I think that that's, um, those are some tools that can be used um, at whatever age. With something like a hypospadias, what were you talking about earlier? Is there still a way to avoid a circumcision in a situation like that? Yes, because it depends on where the hypospadias is. Like I said, if you imagine this a penis, the opening should come out from the tip, right? You see? <clears throat> Sometimes it comes out from down here or from up here. And so the foreskin has grown over or the foreskin is here, but the opening is here. And so they may need <clears throat> and we're gonna finish up here because my water cup's almost empty again. Um, they may need a circumcision in order to correct uh, that because normally what they do is they take them into surgery at some point in time and they bring the meatus, where things come out, back to the tip. They bring it from here back to the tip. And when they do that, the, 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 the foreskin gets a bit sacrificed for that. I don't know if they cannot sacrifice it and sew it back together, that's a good question. I have my concerns about scar tissue um, because a lot of times the scar tissue of retracting a foreskin when it shouldn't be retracted is part of what causes some of the issues that go on with it. All right, um, let's see if we can get everybody's questions quickly answered and then I'm gonna close up here for the night. Um, clean the penis, pulling down for a year for keeping it clean. And, yeah, do not pull a floor skin down, ever, until a child can start to retract it on their own. That may be three years, that could be 10 years before that happens. But most of them, by the time they get to grade school, they can retract it back and you can see it. And it's okay to just take the skin and just 
gently go, oh, can I see anything yet? But you don't pull it back because you tear it if you do that. You tear it and you stretch it and you can cause um, a, a little cut and a tear and then you, you have scar tissue and then it's just kind of a mess, okay? <clears throat> so <clears throat> sometimes there are baby boys who pulled it back. <laughs> They're usually toddlers of some age um, or, or preschoolers that pulled it back that sometimes it gets stuck because the glands coming around kind of has a little ledge right there, okay? And the foreskin, when it pulls back, can sometimes tighten around it. When that happens, um, you get kind of freaked out. <clears throat> All you have to do is take some ice. And when you take the ice and cold water, sit, sit the ice and the cold water on it, it shrinks the penis down a little bit and the foreskin can be pulled back up. <coughs> sometimes, the top of the foreskin can get a little bit red. That's its job, to be able to protect things. Um, sometimes, you know, they get little, their little fingers down in there sometimes and they can scratch something. You can put a little bit of Neosporin or an ointment or coconut oil down in there just to keep it so it doesn't get injured because it's a lot like the inside of your mouth. It's gonna heal quickly. All right, let's see how we're doing. Are we getting there? Um, this is not circumcised. That is. Let's see. Are we getting everybody? What is the best way to clean an uncircumcised? My son's pediatrician said not to pull the skin down. Yes, for a whole year to avoid. I would not pull it down at all. Okay? Seriously, because it's not always ready, even by then. So, I'm going to close up tonight. Um, Remembering that one of the most important things to ask yourself is why and look at the reasons and where it started and if you give birth to a baby boy who has a functioning and purposeful part of their body that's working very nicely and fine leave it alone wash rinse and repeat treat it like a finger don't pull anything back, don't do anything to it, and let nature begin to do what it's supposed to do, which is it will start to retract and separate on its own. And when it does, it does a very fine job. And as it does that, you will know that they will grow up to do what they need to do when they get older. And if they want to have it done, they can do it and they will make the conscious choice to go through the discomfort rather than putting a baby through it, okay? I want to thank you all for being here tonight. This has been phenomenal. And I've really appreciated the comments and the questions and helping each other kind of learn. It's really fun being on the two uh, circuits at the same time because you kind of feed off of each other a little bit. Um, um, and I thought I was supposed to pull back to clean. Is that the opposite? Yes. Do not pull foreskins back. Leave them alone, okay, because it tears it. Just leave them alone. Clean them like fingers. You don't pull, you don't peel it back like a banana. You leave it alone. <laughs> leave the peelings alone. All right. <clears throat> this has been wonderful. I hope you gained a lot. Please tell others, please share it. Um, please help people to really question their choices and their decisions um, in a way that they feel open to wanting to learn, okay? Because like I said, it's a really hot topic and people can get closed off really quick about it. And you just need to kind of open discussions, give them understanding and, and just say to them why. And in closing, you know, I love my story about my Aunt Ethel. My Aunt Ethel used to cut the ends off the ham. She'd put it in the oven, and that was our big family dinner. Everybody for generations after that cut the ends off the ham and put it in the oven. And one day somebody said, why do you cut the ends off the ham? And they all said, I don't know. That's what Aunt Ethel did. 
and Anne Ethel did it because she had a tiny oven and the ham didn't fit. So it served a purpose for her because something needed it. So unless it's needed, unless it's got something that needs medical surgery, leave it alone and let it continue and stop the tradition of something that started a long time ago that was definitely more a religious reason than anything that was a health reason. All right. All right. Thank you so much for everything that you're sending off these little love, love bubbles and everything like that. So go in, hug your children, tell them you love them, tell them they are amazing and that they can do anything that they set their mind to. Have a great week. I'll see you next week. One of my goals soon is to have a partners. And I have so much fun things to share with you from interviews that we've done. And, uh, and anyway, stay tuned because that's going to be really fun as partners as it deals with pregnancy, birth, breastfeeding, and the information's coming from partners themselves. Have a great week. Take care and thanks for joining me.